Legacy networks are failing you. YFS bridges self-sufficient connections that are built to handle your industrial integrations. Let's dive in. Usually in legacy infrastructure, people are using Wi-Fi, they're using Bluetooth, um, there's a couple other protocols that uh, you might know, Thread, Zigbee, and yep. such the like. They would, they would typically sit in that, that, that kind of protocol. The ones that people are mostly common, commonly aware of. Right, and how would they, and what environment would they be using those protocols in? Usually those environments tend to come from the consumer industry, um, so that's why people are mostly familiar with it. Um, you've got your phones, it does Wi-Fi, it does Bluetooth, your headphones, it does yep. Bluetooth. Um, in the commercial industrial space, there's a lot of other things going on. Yep. Um, and WirePass is really focused on that space. Yep. So you're talking about, when we talk about all those protocols, we all know those because we use them, we interact with them every day in consumers, yeah. but actually there's people moving data around in big buildings or moving data from one place to another, and in the commercial space, they're still using those, they're still using those protocols uh, today. Um, yeah, but, but the whole industry is going through a little bit of a change as well. So the, the industrial commercial space has got a lot of legacy stuff because there was not that pull to bring it all together yep. uh, where consumers have gone the other direction. Yep. So what is, what is that legacy infrastructure today that you see before you turn up and go, do you know what, you can do that differently? Yeah, um, depending on the market vertical, there's a lot of proprietary stuff. Right. Um, there's so all let's just take smart buildings. Yeah, well, again, there's a lot of proprietary stuff. Right. Um, if they're not on proprietary, they have tended to go down the, the Wi-Fi space. Um, they run into various um, environmental issues when it comes to some of those protocols because they're not necessarily designed for those harsher environments. And it's it's because they've gone, or because a lot of companies have gone from the proprietary, tried to fix it with some of the more traditional protocols, they're running into these issues and now they're looking for solutions to fix um, what they've started running into. Right. But they're still wanting to move into a, a more modern uh, protocol, uh, a protocol that is more ecosystem driven where you can work with partners, um, not necessarily doing it all in house. Yep. Uh, and so that, that common interoperability is becoming more and more important as well as more people are getting into the space. Yeah. So in my head, yep. the answer to that legacy question is you might have uh, a large building where you've got sensors or something that's collecting data or something that you want to move from one place to another. You've got a lot of them mm -hmm. and you've got a bit of chaos because sometimes you did it that way and then when you've updated 18 months later, you've done it another way uh, or yeah, or you've, you, you've had to interact with some kind of other service provider and in some way there's just this hickledy bigledy type of scenario where there's a lot going on and not necessarily an ordered process. Would that be fair? That would be fair in terms of the different vendors coming together yeah. um, because, it, because it's a mess. But when all these vendors are coming together, again, they're looking for that standard to sit on. And that's where they're running into some new problems that historically they've not necessarily seen. Yeah. So we've covered this historical bit. Yeah. Now we've, you've just used the word problem. Yeah. So what are those problems that they run into? Yeah, okay. We will get to YPASS in a minute. Okay, so a lot of it in, in the consumer space, you're unaware of, right? Because you tend to live in a much smaller environment personally. But as soon as you move into those big campuses, as soon as you walk into places like this, there are things that happen that you're not aware of. Um, there's a lot of RF noise, yep. right? So radios fight with each other. Yep. Um, we walk in here with our smartphones, Bluetooth wants to interfere. You throw 100,000 smartphones in one space, nobody really can connect to anything because things start falling apart. You get problems with physical environments such as roller shutter doors, big metal things that are stopping that radio from going from A to B. Um, how do we get past that? Now, traditionally you throw money at a problem in industrial solutions, but it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter to throw money at problems. Um, particularly as things change a lot nowadays where you want to reconfigure offices um, every couple of years. You don't want to necessarily be pulling those tens of thousands of dollars to reconfigure. You want to kind of find a solution that works around 
this yep. reconfiguring. Yep. So in that respect, when I asked the question about the legacy technology, this truly is legacy because you've got lots of noise going on, lots of different devices talking to each other, using up bandwidth, but then you were then described a physical problem. Mm -hmm. Big steel girders. Yep, that's right. Doors. Yeah. Elevators. And Every change. Change and is a big problem. Change. You think you've solved it, but tomorrow and something's something, different. Something right? changes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, good. So we talked about what the legacy situation is. What the legacy situation then has created problems. Mm -hmm. Now, where you started, how does Wirepass solve those problems? Well, let me give you an, an example or two of how the consumer um, type of protocols would not work in here. That, that will give you that better fix. So there are some protocols out there that basically everything they hear, they repeat and repeat and repeat. So you follow that what's happening there is repeat, 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 it's making more noise. So these other radios are fighting to get it. Which I right? imagine most of the time it doesn't have to be doing that. Correct, correct. Yeah. Another problem comes is if you're transmitting and transmitting, transmitting, if these are battery powered products, you're wasting power, Using you're wasting power. power, you're wasting power. So now you've got a problem where you've actually got people that need to go around changing batteries. Yep. Right? So you want to drop a sensor somewhere, you don't, also don't want to spend $10,000 just to put a power cable to where you need that sensor. So batteries are important, particularly in flat factory floors where, again, things are moving and changing and yep. so forth. Yep. So that's one one solution that you could have that doesn't necessarily work, right? A uh, very common, commonly used protocol is, is, is an example of that. Other ones are where, okay, let's put structured wiring in and put little border routers here, here and there. And we'll put a little island of radio over here, a little island of radio over there, right? The problem happens in that scenario is, well, if that border router breaks, you lose a quarter of the building, you lose a yep. floor of the building. Yep. So now, in, in, in the industrial space, per, as, a, as opposed to the consumer space, you are having a financial problem. If you lose half a building for a day, what does that cost you, a million dollars, two million dollars, ten million dollars, it depends on your industry, of course. If you lose half a building at home for a day, you go, oh, I'll, in the morning I'll, I'll wake up and I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> or you go in the other half, yeah. So, so what you're really looking for is a solution that is friendly to batteries. You're looking for a solution that doesn't have an infrastructure reliance. And if anything goes wrong, you want the system to work out how to fix itself without having to call in IT guys. Because these could be remote guys. Yep. These could be expensive guys. You want it just to work. Right. And that, that's really fundamentally, it's just gotta work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Legacy. Yeah. Problem. Yeah. Three identified things that you don't want to happen. First of all, what is Wirepass? And then individually, let's cover off those three ways that then Wirepass okay. helps solve those problems. So Wirepass is obviously the name of the company, but it's also the product. <laughs> but what it really I'll give is, you that. Yeah, what it what it really is, is it's a highly resilient network solution. Excellent. Right? Resilient to all the problems we, we mentioned. We just earlier, talked about right? it. Okay, so now how? Yes. Right. <laughs> so Every node is a friend of its neighbor. So ultimately, if you want to get the message from A to B, it could have to travel multiple meters, several several feet to get there. In a place like this, that's probably thousands of feet, right? So what, what, what's going to happen here is we don't need to know where that connection to the internet is. We don't really need to know how to get there. We just need to know our neighbors also know uh, that they are aware of where the internet is. So we can we can pass the message to, to our neighbor because our neighbor knows, he his neighbor knows how to get. And so the message will bounce through this network until it gets to the gateway. So there are issues. How can I tell you that me passing it to him versus to that node is the better way to do it? So every node in this network it uses what we call cost-based routing, or as we call cost-based routing, um, it, which is where we get to know that to, in order to go through that direction, I'm going to pass this message about four or five times. So there's a cost to that, four or five. If I go this way, it's three or four times. So that's cheaper. 
but I also know that if I go that way, I am doing longer runs using more power on the transmit, harsher on the batteries. Yep. So there's a cost to that. Yep. So we will make a decision as an individual node, that way is cheaper than that way. Yep. So I will go that way. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you that somewhere in that path, something might not break. So at all stages, I have got options. Yep. Right? If something's going that going going wrong over there, I might say, well normally I would choose you, but you have a problem, so I'm going to use this guy to send it instead. Okay? So fundamentally we've we've got that going on. But we also spoke right at the beginning about interferers, right? Where yep. I was saying radio noise. Yep. Now this can change on a daily basis, an hourly basis, everything will change. So somebody walking into a network with a phone in their pocket might cause an interference between on the network. So rather than having a system that says, we're gonna work on this channel in this building, every node is evaluating its environment and working out what to do with its name. So I'm going to work with you on this frequency. Now that node that I passed it to might work with his neighbor on a totally different frequency. And they will work it out as they were going along this 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 um, journey, so every node's evaluating and dealing with its local interferers to always be ahead of the curve. Where in some of those other solutions we spoke about, on day one they were told to operate binary. this way. It's binary. Yeah, and it okay. changes yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've understood that nodes have a a root path to get the data out of the system, but also share what's the most efficient way, route to go, yep. for instance, that they, that they can't do it. What happens then? Well, ultimately, this, this data is gonna go on the journey to yep. the internet, yes. right? But there is one other thing that could go wrong, right? That gateway to the internet might break, right? So on that journey, that gateway might go down, but if that happens, the nodes along the journey are gonna say, oh, our path has lost its way to the internet, but those other guys have got a different gateway. So I'm going to reform the network and send my message over that direction, go out through that hole to the internet. So we've got redundancy at the gateway level also. All right? Now, again, most solutions don't do that. They use a gateway and then they'll yep. have a failover which yep. it'll switch over. Yep. In our case, you can have as many gateways in the solution as you want. Yeah. All right. Okay. In summary, and I don't know whether this analogy is going to work, but we'll try. We'll try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you're kids, you have these things where you used to pour water into the top and the water used to make its way down to get to the bottom. Yeah. In your network, there would be pla in your network there'd be many points at which that water could get stopped and it could go no further. And what you're explaining is that if you use the wire pass network, the water will get to a point and then it will work its way back and then go down to the next level because it will constantly be searching out the way to get to the bottom. And at every point, what you're describing is, this is there are so many complications, whether it's the node not, not, not knowing how to complicate, whether it's buildings getting in the way, whether it's frequencies getting in the way, whether it's something broken. What your overall platform is offering is the ability, like water, going up through, a, going up through that like, cave system, it gets to a block and it goes, nope, can't do that, back up. No, nope, can't do that. It, Back up. It nope, will can't always do that. have an alternative it's always got, approach. But if yeah. you leave your legacy in place, the moment it gets to that place, it goes broken. Yeah. Broken. Yeah. And it stops. That's right. So at any point, at any point, if any of those things get in the way, it breaks. That's right. And then it does exactly the same thing when you get to the internet connectivity. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Or, or at least Good. the doorway to the internet. Yeah. Right. Right. So. I'm design engineer, sat with all this legacy stuff, right? I've got a problem because somebody's telling me uh, we're adding on 10,000 nodes, or I'm adding on a new building, or somebody's built a building over there, which means that everything in my building's changed, or whatever. Two questions. How quickly and easily do I evaluate? So, so if I just plug Y pass in, and it will it just work? And if, if, if that is the case, what's the, you, you are the one who brought up money. So what is the money implications for just going, I'm just going to 
circumnavigate, or I suppose you sit on top of legacy rather than just start from fresh, because we, we talked about legacy and most things are legacy. So what's a, how do I evaluate it and then quickly understand how all those things are true that you've just described? Right. So we as a, we as a, as a company, we do not have a hardware solution no. um, for, for running this. We are pure software players. Absolutely. But we have silicon uh, partners, Silicon Labs, um, Nordic, for example, where that is basically your physical layer, um, whether they be sub gigahertz, 2.4, or even the new 1.9 uh, gigahertz, which is really clean. So I mean, that some of the things we're solving actually are, are less needed there, if you will, because it's so clean. But they offer the silicon layers. Um, there are some other partners that we have that take those silicon layers, they put them in, in modules, that's fine. Some of them are even um, physical sensors that, that, that our partners will offer. Yeah. Nearly all of those um, um, players have evaluation kits and from our standpoint this is purely just stick the software on. In the case of some of the um, uh, Fit more more finalized, if you will, devices, the modules, the sensors. They tend to be out of the box. It just works. Yeah. Um, where developers get an instant gratification of, oh yeah, I see this happening. Yeah. Um, and so, that's a great place to start. And of course, it's software. They can tweak yeah. that software so, as they go. But I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. That's if I'm starting from afresh. Okay. If I'm not starting from afresh, and I've got all these nodes, and I've got all these gateways. And look at all this infrastructure. Yeah. And I don't. And I want to get rid of all the things you've just dis discussed. How do I layer wide pass onto legacy systems? Well, if you're using um, 2.4, for example, this is a, actually a really good question because if you've got 2.4, we actually use the Bluetooth 5. We just change everything above right. it. They can actually put this software straight on those devices, oh, which okay. is really actually. So you can just yeah, yeah, imprint yeah. it on the yeah. legacy system. Yeah. Okay. The reality of it is, is if you're doing something like smart meters, which is a huge business, right? Yeah. Um, in those scenarios, they don't tend to be um, a, a system. They they can roll out a system because they're starting from a fresh. Yeah, and that's a more right? binary, a yeah. more binary situation. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. So I think that's our overall in introduction to Wirepass. Uh, just understand that if you have a network, you have a huge amount of, whether you like it or not, complications that are going to come your way. Whether it be infrastructure, whether it be protocols, whether it be nodes not talking to each other, whether power being lost in a building, whether somebody changing something that is out of your control. I think what you know is that chaos will reign at some point. In order to not have that chaos, if you just take wire pass, what you're doing is circumnavigating that and throwing a safety blanket over everything which will give you the options, silly analogy, of how to get that water up through the cave system so it can get to its final destination. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good.